Every year now, and this is going on year number three, I've been doing a video that pretty much highlights what I've learned in the past year as a content creator. And this being year three, I'm going to keep that tradition going. Today, I'm going to share with you seven things that I learned this past year being a content creator. These are things that you might not think are a big deal, but for me, they were huge in my learning process as I grow as a content creator and a business owner. So let's get into these seven things that I've learned in this past year by rolling that transition. Now I've been doing this like forever, but this last year, especially when it comes to my content creation, I have been just going all in, like when I first did to learn about this YouTube thing to begin with. But now it is something that is just a habit of mine. I'm always learning. And one of the things that I do every day is I like to get in like eight to 10,000 steps a day. So that's normally when I'm walking my dog. And when I'm doing that, I'm always have something in my ears, right? I'm always listening to something. So I'm listening to a podcast or maybe an audio book or a YouTube video. And I listen to YouTube far more than I watch it, like way more on a scale of probably four to one. I listen to a lot of YouTube videos. As a matter of fact, just this morning, no lie, just this morning, I learned something that I was this just blew my mind. And I was just like, oh, shoot, I, I probably need to do that for the channel. Man, I, I was thinking about something in a wrong way. And I was like, huh, ain't that something? I, I need to change up on that. I, I need to implement that, which is another thing, too. You know, in the learning process, you always need to be learning. And but you learn also through implementation. You know, a lot of people, they take courses. And I think the number is somewhere over 70 percent don't even complete the course. And then those that do. It's the implementation of it is actually doing it. They like the learning and I love the learning myself, but implementation is also part of the learning process. And a lot of people just don't want to do that. And it's just something that is absolutely essential in order to go in the direction and go to the destination that you want to go. If you have a content creation business, I know that for a fact, because I've been doing that for the last year and by implementing it, it has changed things for the better. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. This is the beginning of the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. And subscribers are really a vanity metric. They really are. It's more to build up somebody's ego than it is to actually have something substantial in terms of an effect on your channel. Really, it really doesn't affect your channel really all that much, depending on what your goal is. And it's really to build up the ego of the individual. Now it might help in some regards in terms of getting sponsors and things like that. But to be quite honest, that's going the way of the dinosaur too. There's a lot of, lot of sponsors. They don't care nothing about that. Nothing at all. Because you ever go to a video and you're watching, they're like, yeah, I got a million subscribers or whatever, but then the video only has like a hundred thousand views. Even if you had th uh, 300,000 views. You're like, OK, what happened to the other two thirds of your audience? Where are they at? Like, why aren't all of them watching this? And you know that all 300,000 of those people aren't people who subscribe to that channel. So what, what's going on here? <laughs> so the way the YouTube algorithm works and the subscriber count and everything at the end of the day, subscribers are pretty much on low on the totem pole, very low on the totem pole when it comes to importance. Things like views are way more important engagement. Those things are way more important and things that content creators need to focus on much more than, oh, well, how many subscribers do you have? Yeah, you're not going to get all those subscribers to watch your videos because that's just not how YouTube works. It does not work like that, like that because of the algorithm. You have a lot of people chasing the algorithm and then understanding like it still doesn't work like that because all those people that you're trying to get to watch your video that subscribe to your video, they're still not going to see your videos and you can't make people watch your videos. If they subscribe and they don't watch, then that's on them, you know, and they just kind of sit there. But it's, it's just the way that all that works. And so really subscribers are a vanity metric. Focus on views, focus on engagement, 
focus on content thumbnails and and titles and the subscriber thing will will come you really don't have to be all that concerned about it i'm just keeping it 100. Out of all the things, this one right here is huge. Uh, probably out of the seven things, this one is the biggest for me this year, which is just be willing to pivot. Just, you gotta be willing to pivot. If what you are doing is not working, then maybe it's time to do something else. Maybe it's time to go in a different direction. It doesn't mean to go and do what everybody else is doing. And that might be your problem. Your problem is that you're trying to do what everybody else is doing instead of trying to do what would be good for your channel. I had somebody in my comments trying to tell me that I need to go and watch other um, tabletop RPG channels because you need to know what they're doing. I'm like, no, I don't. Number one, they ain't doing what I'm doing. So how are they going to help me in getting to the place where I want to be, even though they're not doing what I'm doing? And this is, this is from a person who understands nothing about YouTube, because I gave them the benefit of the doubt, went to their channel, looked at their 25 subscribers and six videos and you know less than 100 views type deal. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you can't even be an example to me and yet you want to try to give me advice? Come on, son. What's wrong here? What's wrong with this picture? Nah, you need to do what you need to do in order to get to the destination where you want to go. Maybe it is taking a little bit from over here, taking a little bit from over there, or maybe it's just going in a different direction altogether. And if that does not work, you need to pivot. You need to say, ah, I was wrong. That's not working. So I'll do something else. That's another reason why a lot of content creators don't make it is because they're not willing to pivot because pivoting means that eh, you probably got it wrong on that one. And they're too prideful to do that and they're frustrated and they get on other people's channels and they get on these live chats and they complain about this ain't happening that's not happening this ain't happening it's like okay maybe you need to do something different it's kind of like that kind of like a little bit of a joke of a guy who went to see a doctor and he kept saying he goes doc every time i move my arm like this man it hurts and the doctor was like okay well stop moving your arm like that now it's kind of in your face and maybe a little silly but yeah well you know stop doing that and you probably are not going to go through that kind of pain and it's the same thing in content creation all right well maybe you need to pivot maybe you need to go in a different direction maybe you need to experiment and do something different that's this is the whole game here as far as content creation experimentation pivoting if you, if you have a destination to get to the place where you want to go, you have to be willing to do it. This, is, this has just been huge for me this year. Very huge. And it, I think it's huge for any channel. You have to be humble enough to pivot. I knew this last year, but it really solidified itself this year, uh, especially with the whole pivoting thing. The long game rule, the long game rules. I'm not in this for a short stint or whatever. I'm not doing this because I just like the hobby and people just say, well, I'm just doing this for fun. And I think that's fine if you're doing it for fun, but if you're not getting some results that you would like to get or engagement that you would like to get and you're not willing to pivot, then you need to do things that are a little different and then wait for it. Play the long game on this. Don't try to do things and try to do it like right away. I mean, what'll happen if you do it right away anyway? Enjoy the process. That's why the long game just rules because you learn so much more in the process itself. And you're learning how to appreciate life because you are appreciating the process. The process takes a while and you have to be patient. And that's another thing that you kind of grow out of that patience and patience is a virtue. And so the long game, play the long game. Even if you're just doing this as a hobby, play the long game on this. Don't expect everything to come right now. Do your experimentation, and all the rest of that stuff, but do the long game here. And what you, why are you in a rush for? This is the problem with this whole society today. You know, everything is now, 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 now. 
you know, instant this, instant that, instant chat, instant food, instant this. Just relax for a bit. The more healthy stuff takes time. So let it take time. Let it marinate. So one of the things that has really been a part of my pivoting is the idea of just building more community. So the lead squad is a part of that. The whole idea of the lead squad. That's, so that's not just my mailing list. That's why I try to get people to move on over to revolt because revolt chat, which is pretty much like discord, except that it doesn't have all that other stuff that I don't like on discord. And also it's more private. And this is where you can really connect directly with people in the space. So you don't have to just go back and forth in the comments on YouTube. We can now have a direct connection to one another. We can help one another. I love community like that. I really do. And that's part of my pivoting. That's why I'm doing this beta membership right now, which should be coming out next year. God willing. That's why we're working on that. It's building more community. That is what is awesome about doing what I do. And that's been part of my pivoting because I wasn't going to do memberships, but then I was like, but this builds more community. This, this builds better relationships, stronger relationships and all the rest of that. And this is what I want to do. You know, I want to make your tabletop RPG more immersive and enjoyable and meaningful. And I think the meaningful part comes in when you have that community connection with people. So community is just awesome. I guess that's one of the things that uh, in, in pivoting and doing all this stuff that this last year, I, I fell more in love with community uh, than before. And I'm really pursuing that in the next year. Haters are part of this content creation thing, especially if you put your face out there, like in a video or anything else. It's just a part of the game, y'all. You're gonna have haters. This last year though, I'm finding a particular hater on my channel. And it's haters that just don't like it when I mention the Bible. They don't like it when I take scripture and I use it in my content even when it's relevant to what it is that I'm talking about, oh, they just don't like it. I've had people in my comments unsubscribe because I mentioned a verse from scripture. Okay. So there's a couple different ways that I could take this and there's a couple different directions that I could go. But one thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna cater to haters. If you didn't do your due diligence in finding out who I am and anybody who knows who stay on this channel for any length of time knows I'm unabashedly a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am who I am that comes out in my content. It is what it is. I'm not hiding that under a rock. And if it offends you, be offended. That's all I can tell you. Like a old Christian saying, life is rough. Pray hard. Listen, I know. There are scores of godless people who probably watch my channel. More godless people than those who are not. I get it. I understand that. But there is a difference, folks, between being godless and God hating. These are not people who get butt hurt over the fact that I mentioned something from scripture, especially if it's relevant to what it is that I'm talking about in the video. They can even look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, I have somebody who's kind of like in my core group right now who is unabashedly an atheist, probably a little bit vehemently so, but he's in my core group. We get along just fine. We start talking about that. We're going to disagree hard. I see it coming. I really do. But even he will say, um, well, yeah, that was true. I mean, that part right there is true. Now, if I can get along with an atheist who is a part of my core group, who helps me make videos for my channel. What makes you think that I'm going to chase after you because you get butt hurt over the fact that I mentioned scripture. I'm unabashed in my identity in my service of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am who I am and I'm out there just like a lot of people are out there about who they are in their identity. But when I'm like that, hmm, somehow it's wrong. Somehow it makes me feel uncomfortable. Somehow they're triggered. Well, that would not be my fault. Is this something that I have to deal with, particularly on this channel?
So this last one is similar to the first one, and it's that I'm always going to be learning. And I enjoy that. And that actually gives me comfort. Because I love learning. I am not so wrapped up in myself to where I'm like, well, you know, I've learned everything I can learn about this, that, and the third. No. I always love learning. There's always something to learn. And that is what's so wonderful about the process of being a content creator because you're always learning something. And I still have so much to learn about this and being an entrepreneur and creating content. And I, there's so much to learn. And even if I don't master all of this stuff, and I only master a few of them, it, the process itself is so fulfilling. That lights a fire under me. And it gives me an impetus to keep going in this thing. Because, well, if I'm always going to be learning, then if I don't give up, I'm going to get to that destination that I have. This agenda is going to be fulfilled. And folks, that is the point. And I know I'm smiling because I just can't help myself. That's part of the game, baby. And I love it. So there you have it, folks. Seven things that I have learned this past year, you know, and I'm in, I'm excited about this next year. I be really believe that this next year is kind of going to be pivotal because I pivoted. <laughs> That's why I meant that that one for me was just big. It's just opening up doors just because I'm just going to go in a different direction over here to see how this works, right? And I'm excited about that direction. It, it lights a fire under you. It really does. Hey, if you got any value out of this video today, so if I said anything at least halfway encouraging or of some use, y'all know what to do right here, right here. Hit that like button, crush it, y'all. Also, if you wanna stick around, maybe you wanna stick around for the next year. <laughs> and see this direction that we're going and just kind of hang out with us. I would really appreciate it. And I would really love to have you to do that. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Also join the lead squad, y'all join the lead squad, that community, man. Cause that's the direction that we're going for real. That is where we're going. I'm so excited about this next year. I really am. I'm, I'm excited about content. I mean, it's three years in, Yes, there's a lot of frustration and stuff, but I'm telling you, man, this is where it's, I love this stuff. I dig it, I really do. And I'm excited to, um, for this next year, really am. Let's get to the question of the vid because you know, uh, that's how I roll here on RPG Elite. It's really simple. I've given you seven things that I've learned in this past year. So if you're a content creator, and even if you do it as a hobby or you're doing it part time or you're doing it because you want to do it full time in this past year so far, even if you're new on your journey, what have you learned being a content creator here on YouTube in the time that you've been on here? Some key things that you've learned. Just give me one or two. Don't give me the, you know, don't give me a TLDR. Just give me one or two and hit it down in the comments below. That's where we need to do this, y'all, because we need to get that engagement going. Y'all know what's up when it comes to that. I've enjoyed this video, man. I really have, but alas, it is come time to do my snaggle push. So exit, hey, if you've got a game this weekend, y'all, then happy game and I pray it is an RPG Elite session that is more enjoyable, more immersive, more meaningful. I've got a Numenera campaign, y'all, that I'm gonna be running tomorrow and I'm excited about it. So until next time, y'all, God willing, it's your boy, Servant of Shiloh in the hizzy, and I've got to say, peace, 5,000 leeks, I'm gone. <laughs>